Jesus. Can we just worship the Lord intentionally for the next one minute? I don't know if you paid attention to the song that was just sang now, but I want to give everybody an opportunity to catch up. Just take the next one minute and think about the song that sound of heaven just led us to sing. Indeed, great is our God. And indeed, great is my God. The God that I serve is great. He's mighty. We pour out our praise to you. The house of kings pours out her grace to you. Her praise to you. It is bright in our lungs. And I just pour out my praise to you, Lord. The king ladies in the house, we pour out our praise. The king men, the children, everyone here pours out their praise to you. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise, all, all of our praise, all, all of it. Not keeping any because none is deserving of your own praise. Not even myself is deserving of your praise. Can you put those hands together for Jesus? As we pour, is that how you pour out your praise? I want to see somebody pouring out their praise in the room this morning. Wow, 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 wow. 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 You know, the sound of heaven couldn't really tempt me. If I knew how to sing, I would have, <laughs> would have stayed on this stage. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to make sure my children know how to sing as compensation for their mother who doesn't know how to sing but has a, an amazing husband who can trust. Okay, please be seated. Uh, you know it's a family time. When it's King Lady Conference, when it's Mother's Day, it's, it's family time. We can, we can have family time together, right? Yes, it's church, but this is also family time. Hallelujah. <sighs> the day has finally come. Amen. King Lady Conference, the last day. You know why it's sweet? It's because it's the last it's the last day of the conference. And our King Lady Coordinator, I want to celebrate her one more time. Judith, thank you. Thank you. If you were here yesterday, I actually spoke about how she um, was in the street. She's already awake. Don't worry. The conference has been fulfilled in her. Um, I was saying yesterday that usually when I pick a King Lady Coordinator, one of the first tasks you have to do is to give me the team for that year's conference. I tell you, it's not an easy task. When FL tells you the team for the conference, I want it. Why? Because I would have prayed about it. God would have told me the direction he would have us go that year. And I'm just waiting for them to confirm it. I know it's when you already have a marking scheme, you can't just do any. So I'm when she, when I told her, give me the team for the conference, the, the lady, I wanted to say the girl. <laughs> The lady just, she was spot on. The chats are there as evidence. She was, she gave me what the, can we celebrate her one more time? <laughs> it already proves to me that that's which God has designed this conference to be will fulfill itself Amen. in your lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor, for this opportunity. Please help me celebrate him one more time. <laughs> The team for our conference, awake, awake, awake. And, you know, the word awake has several meanings. Prophetess Fanny already began to bless us. She isn't here. She'll join us shortly. How many of us were here yesterday? My goodness. She, we went back with no legs on the table. She, <laughs> she pulled everything. Even those of us were trying to hold on to one more leg, she... She removed everything. She did justice. 
and we celebrate her in absentia, even as she joins us soon. Thank you so much, Ma. We appreciate and we celebrate your ministry. So the team Awake, you know, when you talk about Awake, it has several meanings. The dictionary will give you its own meanings. I know the dictionary has different, when we talk about dictionary, it has different dictionary, right? We have Wikipedia, Oxford, we have several dictionaries. But then guess what? The greatest dictionary, the greatest place you can visit for the meaning of a word is actually the word of God. And the Bible has its own definition for the word awake, what it means to be awake. And one of the things that um, gives me so much joy and so much pleasure is because first I know when God gives his word is because the set time of somebody is here and now. When God releases a word, the set time for the fulfillment of that word is actually here and now. And to awake can be seen in two ways. It's either an address to something that is sleeping or an encouragement to somebody who is already awake. I'll take it again. When God gives his word for you to awake, it's either he's trying to wake you from slumber or he's trying to actually give you a thumbs up. Those of us who are alert and awake already in the area of our purpose, that's the agenda of this conference. Our pastor preached a message two years ago, the danger of slumber. Many of us can still remember. For a lot of us, for that whole week, sleeping was quite difficult. The moment you want to, you just remember the danger of slumber. That's not to say it's not good to sleep. It's, it's good to sleep and have a very good sleep. And he said something that will never leave my heart. He said, the real problem for a heavy-duty Christian is slumber. So when the enemy sees that God has spoken to you, God has given you his word, when the enemy sees that you know exactly what you've been called to do, and he knows he cannot steal from you, guess what he, he begins to seek to do? He wants to put it to sleep. So you, yes, you know all those mighty things God has said concerning you. You have a diary for it. You even backed it up in the cloud. Guess what the enemy wants to begin to do? He wants to put those things to sleep. And that's why it's very important when we come into a time and season like this for us to fan into flame all, all that God has said concerning you and not allowing any of it go to sleep. When you come into a season, when you discover these four things, or these five things rather, that you lack discernment, you do not have discretion, no decrease on your lips. In fact, there is no dedication and no discipline. You are, you are deeply into slumber, spiritual slumber. I'll take it again. Let's just call it the symptoms of slumber so that you, you use it to check yourself and see the areas where you need to wake up so that I could see the areas where I need to wake up. The symptoms of slumber the first one, no discernment. When you come into a season where you discover that your discernment is low and is poor, slumber is creeping in. And that could be equivalent of blindness. I know the, you know, towards the end of last year, God told me something. He said, as I prepared prophetically for the year 2023, he told me clearly, he said one of the things you will need in 2023 is the spirit of discernment. Whatever you do, whatever you do, make sure you embrace. Make sure you allow the spirit of discernment in you in the year 2023 because it was going to be very vital. And a lot of men of God confirmed it. The spirit of discernment is key in this year 20, you can't run life by emotions, people. You can't even run it by logic. There's a way that cement right to a man, but the, destru the end of it is what? Destruction. It didn't say there's a way that a man is not sure of this. It said that way seems so right, perfectly right. In fact, the facts are on ground. But if it is not in alignment with the spirit of God, it is destruction. And that's why it's important that whatever you do, have the spirit of discernment. It teaches you when to do what, how to do what, and with whom 
to do it. Thank God it's mothers. Every mother in the house can bear me witness that you need discernment. You need it in your home. It, teach, it, it guides you. It, it teaches you what to do so that you don't run, run life outside of the will of God. The second symptom of slumber is when you do not have discretion. And the equivalent, you know the first I said discernment, the equivalent is blindness, right? For the second one, no discretion. You lack knowledge. When you do not have discretion, it means there's a, lack, there's a gap. You need, to, you need to feed. When you lack knowledge, what do you do? You feed. You feed quickly. Feed on the world. Feed like your life depends on it. Have you ever seen someone who is in a state of emergency and needs blood? They, they are not sluggish. They, they rush. They use a bigger needle. They, they just rush it in. The next symptom of slumber is no decree. Inability to speak. Any season you live in and you refuse to maximize with your decree can't last. It can't last. There was a season of my life that God, God used. I, can't, I don't joke with decree. I don't talk a lot. I, I like to... I like to observe more than I talk, but thanks to church, it has a way of bringing you out, you know. So, you know, but I don't joke with decree. I, I don't joke with decree. There was a season of my life God sat on me, on this, sat on this matter with me. Decree. It went as far as me having a journal where the whole journal was just, was just filled with decree. Decree about various aspects of my life. I wasn't married then. In fact, the decree included pastor. Ah, no. Trust now. Man matter is not a joke. The decree up to my children, I, oh no. Decree, it's important you decree the word of the Lord. Don't just, yes, there's the place of prayer, you know, you pray, you pray, but never forget you're a king. You're a king, and kings rule by decree. Don't forget it. You hear a powerful sermon, Get a decree out of it. That may be all you need. Get a decree out of it. God gives you a word. Turn it into a decree. Turn it into a declaration. Sometimes you're busy, you know. The only thing that pops back in your heart is that decree you've crafted. You know, sometimes when you complain, I don't have enough time to pray. I don't have enough. I'm wishing. Why not start with decrees? There's no one who decrees right who will not end up praying. No one. Because sooner or later, as you begin to churn out those words, it begins to do something in your spirit. It begins to well up in your spirit until it is manifested. So when you come into a season where you discover your mouth is shut, you need to wake up and speak. Just speak. There's a song that says, speak into the atmosphere. Just, just keep talking. Just keep speaking. The next, no dedication. Those are symptoms of slumber. No dedication. And when I talk about dedication, it means no dedication to something higher than you. Everything is about you, yourself, and I. Everything. It just ends at... There has to be something you're dedicated to that is far bigger, that is far higher than you. And that's what God's kingdom is about. Make sure there is something. Yes, it's good to do what you love to do. But make sure you tie it to something bigger than you. Tie it to an authority. Tie it to God. Tie it to kingdom. So when you come into a season where you discover that everything is just about you, the enemy is bringing slumber. That's if you've not completely slumbered. The enemy is bringing slumber. The last no discipline, always living in comfort zone. No, no discipline. No, you, you just like to live life the way you want to, how you want to. Nobody talks to you. That's, that's dangerous for royalty. It's, it's, it, royalty never lives in comfort zone. Check, watch movies. Check. No, no one stays in comfort zone. Even the Bible says, woe unto them that is in Zion. 
no comfort zone. The Bible is littered with stories of people, whether male or female, that were awake to destiny, that were awake to purpose, that were awake to the speakings of God concerning them. And I'll just use Deborah and David so that we don't, we don't stay in church all day. I'll just use the story of Deborah and David to encourage us and to show us how these people stood out. In fact, they, they were awake so much that when Deborah was going to go to battle, they said even the stars fought in their curses like the stars. David was so awake that he never lost a battle, not even one battle. That was how awake David was. And one of the beautiful things I like about this team is it's not gender sensitive. Awake. If a female, if a lady will be awake, God will use her. If a male will be awake, God, in fact, if a child, it's not even age sensitive. All the Bible, all God needs us to do is to hear the reading. Is to hear the call to awake. Let's open our Bibles to John chapter 5, verse 4. Give me there. He said, For an angel went at a certain season into the. Okay, so let me give us background to this. Let's not assume everybody knows the story. Um, this was. A crippled man by the water side, whom Jesus met and asked a question, What should I do? Right? And this was his question. He said, For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. So, what's the, what's the key word here? Whosoever. Whosoever we 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 will step in first. So when it's time to awake, it's not a time to procrastinate. A time to awake is not a time to give excuses. A time to awake is not even a time to compare yourself. It doesn't matter how similar your destiny is with somebody, it's not a time to compare. Because the moment you step in, you will see, the moment you, you step into that, that call, you will see the wonders of God like you've never seen before. Judges chapter 5, verse 12. Let's go to that scripture that's talking about Deborah. Judges chapter 5, verse 12. It says, awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake, utter a song. Arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Abinom. Now, you know, when I began to study the life of Deborah, one of the things that stood out for me or that struck me was, you know, the Bible said she was a prophetess, she was a judge, she was a wife, and she was a mother in Israel. And I began to ask myself, you know, most people in the Bible, most kings in the Bible had the stories of when they were appointed. Somebody like David, we knew his history. How he was at the backside of nowhere. And how God picked him. Now for Deborah, the Bible just gave us an introduction to whom Deborah was. At what point was she appointed a judge? At what point... Was she anointed as a prophetess? Let's not say at what point was she a wife. I'm sure the people back then knew. But I said all of that to say, part of what qualified Deborah was not necessarily the ceremonial calling. It wasn't necessarily what qualified Deborah. She was just awake enough to know that Israel was, such in, a t was in such a time that they were mightily oppressed. I'm sure everybody kept saying, what are we going to do? When is God going to come? You know, everybody kept lamenting. Everybody kept complaining. But guess what? I missed all of that. There was a woman. That's why I said, the call to awake is not gender. If a man 
had hid that call to our way, God would have used him. But a woman had the call to awake and she positioned herself. And no wonder the Bible says she was a job. The, the moment she positioned herself, people began to come to seek counsel from her. Why? Not necessarily because a ceremony was called to make her a judge or to make her a prophetess. But she was awake in her spirit enough to know the counsel of God for the children of Israel at that time. And no wonder when it was time for God to, to just end the oppression, she was still the one who said, can we go to Judges chapter 4? He said, Deborah sent for Barak and said, have you not heard? So probably God had been talking to Barak, awake, awake, but he couldn't do it on his own. He said, and she sent and called Barak the son of Abinom, out of Kedes, Naphtali, and said unto me, Hath not the Lord, take note of that word, hath not, she didn't say, the Lord is saying now. She said, hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, go, and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee 10,000 men of the children of Naphtali, and of the children of Zebulun. It says, Hath God not said, please stay on verse 6. Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, What is God saying to you? What has God told you that you're probably sleeping on? Or that you're probably thinking everything has to be in perfect shape before I launch out? One of the greatest things we learn in ministry. Is to walk by faith. Everything will not always be perfect when it's time to go. But as you go, you will see God's wonder. And when you talk about awake, it's also not about your strength. It's not, I mean, testimony. it's not necessarily about your strength. It's not for the smartest that you are smart. No. No, Pastor and I used to, used to always um, have a conversation. One of those days, I was just telling him that, you know, you just see somebody who, who has risen up so high and you admire, and you discover they are not actually the best of people. I'm not saying they are not best, but I'm trying to tell you that what qualifies people to be mightily used by God is not smartness. It's not. So in case you're feeling I didn't graduate with the best of degree, I didn't, it's not about that. If only you can heed the call to awake. If only you can hear the reading of this season and just awake. Awake to whatever God has called you to. Psalm chapter 57 verse 8. I guess this will be our last scripture before we pray because we need to pray. Psalm 57 verse 8. This is talking about David. Most of us are familiar with the story of David and Saul. How he went through. In fact, Saul sought to kill David at many times. And it was in one of those situations that David wrote the scripture of Psalm 57 verse 8. It says, I wake up my glory. Awake, psalmistry and harp. I myself, we awake when? Early. In the midst of all of that trouble, everything wasn't sorted out yet. But guess what? The moment David could sense what heaven was saying about him, he joined in the song and he said, Awake up, my glory. Another version of um, the Bible says, Awake up, my soul. Awake up. Awake, psalmistry and harp. I myself will awake early. So it means someone can awake late. And it's, it's dangerous. Ask Samson. He eventually awoke, right? English. Let's just calm down. He eventually woke up. Let me stay there. <laughs> he eventually woke up. But he did what? 
it wasn't the best of time. Mm. I wish he did before Delilah did what she, I, I just wish some, the story would have been different. So it's possible to awake early and to awake late. It's possible. But this was David speaking to himself here. I wake up, my soul. I, I like to use that translation, my soul. My soul, awake. Awake. Brings us back to decree. Awake. You talking to yourself, you making a declaration. Awake. Awake, my soul. Sometimes you put your name on it. Joyce, awake. It's time. It's time. Now is the time. Awake. Awake. Awake, Sam Mystery and Hab. David was well known to be a musician. In fact, he played so well that when he begins to minister, spirits that were, you know, that Saul was struggling with, literally, his same enemy, but David ministered so well that Saul was delivered temporarily from whatever spirit was troubling him. So this was David speaking to his soul. This was David speaking to his ministry, his call, his purpose. And he gave a timestamp to it. He said, early. There is a time and there is a season for you to awake. There is a time and there is a season for me to awake. And when it's time, you will know. You will know. You begin to hear the call to awake from your inside. You will hear. You begin to feel discontented with where you are. You'll be uncomfortable. You hear your spirit and your soul begin to have conversations. Now is the time. What, what, you know, conversations can happen on your inside. They can happen. Everyone here has witnessed that. So when it's time for you to awake into the God, call of God for your life, you would know. And like I said earlier on, it's different for different persons. And also for you, it's in faces. What I need to awake to right now may be different from what I awoke to or what I woke up let me stay there, yesterday. It will be different tomorrow. And that's why it's good to walk with God's spirit. Walk with him part time. He will show you. He will teach you. And he will bring confirmation. And that's why this conference was organized. The first time you are hearing the call to awake is not just when this team came out. It started from your inside. This is just a confirmation. Can you yield that call to awake? Can you yield the call to actually awake? Hath not the God of Israel commanded? Has he not commanded? Saying, go, go, go. What's the instruction God is giving to you in this season? What is he saying to you in this season? You know, sharing with those of us who were here yesterday, and I told us of my own experience. I just discovered for the past one month, I've been praying a particular prayer. And I just sense in my spirit again that somebody needs to adopt that prayer. And the prayer is simple. God help me. God help me. You can't do it on your own. Even if you try and you go far, you discover there is a limit to you. There is a limit to what you can do for yourself. There is a limit to how far your strength can go. There is a limit. God help me. Lord help me. What is that thing you are desirous of? What is that thing you know you should be doing now, now, now that you are sleeping over? God help me. Help me. Help me. Remember I told you the call to awake begins with a rhythm. It begins with a rhythm. It begins with a call from your inside. When you are hearing it 
externally. It's just a confirmation. Lord, help me. Help me. And as you make that prayer, you just discover that more words are coming, but you still cannot utter. You come back to God. Help me. Lord, help me. Help me. Lord, help me. I don't know about you, but I want to be on time on, with God's agenda for my life. I want to be on time. Not, nothing makes a person beautiful than to awake to purpose. Not, if you ever see a person look good, ever see a person look beautiful, it's because they woke up to God speaking for their life past season. Lord, help me. Help me to awake. Help me to run with that which you have given, which you have handed over, which you have committed to me in this season. Lord, help me. Can we just rise to our feet? We want to spend time to pray. Lord help me, Lord help me I, I can't seem to go past this word help me and I've seen God help me I've seen him Lord help me, I, I can't do this on my own Lord help me Lord help me can you just let go of yourself in his arms, don't be told, don't, don't be packaged, just, just you and God, talk to God. Awake, awake, sing a song, sing the song of awake. Kalabo shanta lika sianta. Do what David did. He told his soul to awake. Do what Deborah did. She told herself, awake, 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 Deborah. Kalabo shanta lia kalabo shada dagaba. Eleketo brakata lia suprakata. Ene kali karobo shanta lika zabora kata. In a kupa lika zuanta le pete, in a kali kata, my soul awake. E kera bo shanta radagabo shada dagaba, e kali kazuan paleke tu balika zianta, e ne kete reke zupa lakata, e na kali kato balika ziankata, e na kara bo shanta ta. A lot of times the reason you are unfulfilled is because you haven't woken up. There is great fulfillment when you wake up to your purpose. There is great fulfillment when you are doing what God will have you do in this season of your life. No fulfillment supersedes it. Anakali kazua papa leke to balia so pata leke zikata. My soul awake. Enakara po shantata. Enakali kazupa leke te. In the case of Rabbi Shantata, there are some things that may not be corrected around you, except you wake up. Anakalika zuprakata leke zikata. There are some patterns that may not cease, except you wake up. Aleketa lika zupalentete. Elakanta lika zupalantata. In the case of Topali, you know those areas. You know those areas. The Lord has spoken to you and has placed the responsibility on you to awake. I tell you, they will remain that way except you wake up. Alakata lika ziata. Eneketo balika zikata. Enakalika zubrakata. Eneketa lika ziantata. 
e parakato paleke zikata ene keta lika liba sopra kata ene kete lika siata e pa 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 lika sopra kata ene kete kele keke God gave me a promise as I began to prepare for this conference and he said he will visit us in this conference and invest for himself those who he will use in a strange way where are the people where are the people Alakata Likata, enough of that slumber, enough of you sleeping. How long will you slumber? How long will you sleep? Elaka Zupa Lekete, Elakala Bo Shanta Dagaba, Eleketa Teleke Sikata, Marako Pashanda Gaba. Remember what Pastor told us when the enemy cannot steal from you. What he seeks to do is to put you to sleep. But we are saying no. Oh, that you may awake. Oh, that you may arise and go. As not the God of Israel said unto you, go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, we awake out of our slumber. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody join me to judge the spirit of slumber? Many of you don't know this, but the power, the cutting edge, the power of a spell is in its abil ability to make you slumber. That's the first thing a spell does. You've heard of spells, you've heard of curses, you've heard of woes, but you didn't know that the environment that empowers a spell is slumber. If it cannot make you sleep, it can't attack you. A spell sedates dimensions of you that will contend for your destiny. That's what it does. You'll still be standing with your eyes open. You'll still be chanting scripture. But the part of you that can get angry against wickedness is asleep. So your only option in the day of trouble is to cry, complain. After you've done everything you know to do, we didn't hear you fight. Are you still there? Yes. When you hear people that are in trouble and you ask them, what have you done about what you're going through? And you see that they have cried, they have made phone calls, they've, they've gone to prayer houses, They've done everything, but they didn't count that an anger, holy anger, that there was a day that they didn't give their eyes sleep throughout the night. Then that's a spell. They are awake. They are alert, but not awake. They are alive, but not awake. And I want us to judge. The Lord says I should judge the spirit of slumber. That if I judge it, Veils will fall from people's eyes. Lift your hand in the name that is above every name. Every seed of slumber that has been sown, manifesting, creating spells, creating effects that are not consistent with the counsel of the Lord, over every hand lifted as your voice will thunder. Let that seed die. Let the spirit of slumber be judged. And let the spells be broken. Lift your voice. I want to hear it thunder. For the next one minute, I want everybody in this room to lift their voice. Everybody in this room. 
and I will ever praise you. Oh Lord, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. For some reason, I can't hear your voice yet. Oh Lord, you are my God. You say, I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. Hold up, hold up. I will learn to walk in your ways. Step by step, you lead me. I will honor you all of my. Oh Lord, you are my God. You are my God. And I will never pray. Oh Lord, you are my God. You are my God. And I will Thank you for what you have done today. Thank you for much more you will do in our lives. And so we open our hearts to receive from you. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the spirit of slumber be broken. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let demonic gatekeepers that have held the people bound. Father, we release the authority that you've given to us and we command the oppressions to be broken. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say break, 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 break. Come out, come alive, come out, come alive. Awake, awake, awake. Everywhere, everywhere you are sleeping, we rouse you up in the name of Jesus. Everywhere your sound has been taken from you, we call it forth in the name of Jesus. Everywhere you have been functioning at a level that is less than the way you ought to function, we pull you up to full capacity in the mighty name of Jesus. Every lioness in the house that has been stopped, we pull you out in the name of Jesus. I say awake. I say awake! 
I see a work. Isaiah 52. He said, put on your strength. Put on your strength. Come out of the place of weakness. In the mighty name of Jesus. I confront demonic gatekeepers. Because I saw them. I confront demonic gatekeepers. Gatekeepers that have held you upon. Be broken. In the name of Jesus. You are coming out. You are coming out. You are coming out. You are coming out from the place of spiritual irresponsibility. You are coming out from the place of weakness. You are coming into a place of fierceness in the realm of the spirit. Oh, magazeke de bosakaya, zezu zakaya na mate, zupale zeke yana, zanto kose kayata, ereka suka baya, pakate kenge kama, rataka na shata, ezoko barato siyama. Every load, every oppression of darkness that you have been collecting and carrying by consent, today you will let it go. I said you will let it go. I say you will let it go. Amen. Things that you've been tolerating in your life and you've explained them as the norm. You are saying that it is this. You are saying that it is that. You are saying that it is this. That is how a lady, you know, approached my sister and person Kechi. She had, she, she had all of a sudden her health flipped this way and she was taking 31 drugs in a day. 31 drugs per day. And she began to talk to her and they started praying and in a dream she saw herself with a sack on her head then they carried another sack and they gave to her then they carried the second one and they gave to her so she held one like this she had one on her head she had the second one and they said carry the fourth one she said how can i carry it she carried they said carry it she carried that's the 31 drugs that you are carrying a sack and they started praying after the first set of prayers she had the dream she was telling the person i will not carry i will not carry and she dropped it but she still was not strong and the person brought cane and flogged her and after flogging her he said carry and she carried it again she ran back to her she said your strength is not oh yeah she joined her and they prayed and they prayed. The dream was progressive for like seven times until eventually the last time she now saw her standing and telling the person, carry your load. That is what I've come to do this morning. That where you are weak, I join my faith with your pastors. Kabajata is Owners of evil load. You are calling it leg pain. You are calling it no promotion. You are calling it whatever. They have given you sack. You are calling it migraine. There's block on your head. They have given you something. While men slept, the enemy comes to give them load. Every load. Every load. Every load. That I'm carrying, that I ought not to carry, I drop it out. Drop her, drop her, drop her, drop her, pull it off. See of that garment. Come out of slumber. Come into a place of strength. Kappa shatter. Hey, Kappa Lata. You have one minute to pray that prayer. In Jesus' name, please be seated. For the sake of time, I stand on the existing protocol and I celebrate you, sir. Celebrate you, ma. Just smile, small. Smile for me. We can't quarrel. Hallelujah. I went to minister somewhere and rushed in. I should have been here earlier. Hallelujah. So let me explain why I'm late. I was supposed to be here earlier. Hallelujah. Awake, awake. Those of you that didn't come yesterday, you missed. Oh. You really missed. Next time, try. And some of you did not have any reason. It's just that the spirit of slumber 
is part of your village people. That is by your gate. That did not allow you to come. Next time, tell them to remove hand. Hallelujah. Awake, awake. Thank you, choir. Put on your strength. O house of kings. That's Isaiah 52. Put on your beautiful garments. If he tells you to awake and to put on your beautiful garment, it means that you are clothed with something that is not beautiful. You are clothed like Joshua, the high priest, the son of Josedek. He was clothed with a garment that was a filthy garment. And so the angel had to intervene. He said, awake, put on your beautiful garment. Meaning that while you were asleep, they changed your garment. You put on a garment that is not beautiful. And so you are wondering why you don't have favor. You know, a lady came to me and she said, I need deliverance. I said, why? She said, don't laugh, we're serious. I said, what? She said, if I go to a party, if I sit in front, they will start saving food from the back. Before the food will get to front, it will get finished. She said, if that day I'm sitting behind, they will start saving. That's no matter. She said, no, it's not normal. I'm not particular about the food. Why is it that when they are giving people things, when it gets to my turn, it is finished. There's a problem. That's a woman that is awake to see that this is something that is playing out and it ought not to be so. Awake. Put on your beautiful garment. Probably you put on a garment of mourning by mistake. Maybe I'll be a bit of a storyteller today. Because I'm, I want to stir you into impartation. And I will still use Pastor Nkichi. She's here. We celebrate you. At a certain time, her father took ill. And it was sickness that was near unto death. And so they kept wondering. All of a sudden, this man that is healthy, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? To cut the long story short, they had just lost an uncle. And there's a custom that after the right or whatever, the, her mother, which is the senior wife, is supposed to do something. Well, the other wife didn't like the way the thing played out. And so, by the time she had finished mourning, when you are mourning, they'll carry mat, they'll put it, you sit down and all of that. By the time she had finished mourning, when she was going, the mat was expensive. She said, no, I don't want to throw this mat away. She carried the mat and she gave it to her mother as gift. And the mother was not discerning, did not read anything. She just carried the mat and she kept. And so when the, they had done everything medically and they kept, she kept praying, God, what's going on? God, what's going on? The Lord now revealed this thing I'm talking to you. She asked her, ah, he's a harmless one. Mama, what do you want to do with mats that somebody used to mourn? While you are asleep, you carried garment that you should not carry. Kaba shata mai, zuba kata bajia, reke zogo balita. They got the mark, they prayed, they burnt it, and instantly, he became okay. Awake! Awake and become responsible. Deborah spoke to herself. Awake, oh Deborah. Put on your strength. Awake and stand upon your watch. Stand and be sensitive to things that wants to come. I remember a dream I had. The previous place we were saying before we moved into uh, uh, where we use now for service. He had like two or three outlets. And I saw myself standing in front. And there were like three guys. They were ruffians. They came and they wanted to enter the church. And I stood at the gate and I said, no, you can't enter. Then all of a sudden, you know how a dream is. I, they went to the side and I saw myself appear there. And I said, you cannot enter. Then they went to the third entry. And I saw myself there. And I woke up. I said, God, what's going on? And the Lord said, you are a I watch her. 
know your gates? Do you know your post? Do you man your gates? Awake to prayers. It is why men slept. But he said, ye are gods. Stop sleeping. Gods don't sleep. When you say you are a man, you continue sleeping like men. And they will die like men. men. But when you take yourself from that place and say, no, this narrative of men, I refuse it in my life. I'm watchful. Even while you are asleep in your body, your spirit man is awake. To be awake is to be sensitive. To be awake is for your spiritual senses to be alert. To be awake is for you to come into purpose. To be awake is for you to understand the calling of God in your life. To be awake is for you to be able to enter whatever office that the Lord tells you to enter. Look at Deborah. She was a prophetess. She was the wife of Lapidot. She was a judge in Israel. She was a mother in Israel. She could multitask. She doesn't take one. And she says, no. I can only do this. I can only be a that. Have you asked yourself, where was Lapidot? Who was Lapidot? Maybe Lapidot was, I don't want to use the word. Anything you think in your mind, that's who he is. But she got up. It was a challenge. She didn't look at the state of her. She covered her husband. And she was still known as the wife of what? Of Lapidot. She knew her place. She said, you go to war, Barak. Barak said, I will not go without you. She went with Barak. And the Bible said, when she was done, she returned to the palm tree of Deborah. She didn't say, no, after I've gone, I'm now the leader. She knew her gates. Do you know your gates as a woman? Do you man your gate? Your first gate is a prayer gate. That's your birthing center. That's where you take your destiny by the hands. That's where you take the destiny of your spouse by the hands. That's where you take the destiny of your children by the hands. I'll give you a story. I don't know why I'm highlighting her. Her daughter. She was going for a quiz. And she said, Mom, pray for me. And she held her hands. And she wanted to bless her. But what came out of her mouth is, your place, another will not take. And the daughter said, mommy, you are over spiritual. I'm going to quiz. Pray, bless me. You are saying, my place, another will not take. You know how children are. What's the relationship between that and, I bet mommy, bless me. She left. Long story short, she took the fourth prize. The people had already, because it was going with cash, decided before the competition who they wanted to give. And so they downgraded her. But when she, this course came out, she said, no. It's only one question I'm not sure. So even if I failed, for example, she'll be 98, not 80. No. My, when I was coming for prayers, my mommy said, my place, another, will not take. Started crying. Everybody now started asking, who is the mommy? When she came, we said, oh, it's pastor, no wonder. My mommy said, my place, another, will not take. They called for the scripts. And they saw the error. And they gave her. That's a mother that is manning her gates. Are you manning your gates? You enter your office, they turn you here, they turn you here. You are not anywhere. If they are looking for who they want to sack is you, who they want to send messages to, who is the person they want to, because you don't even have gates. You don't have. Awake to the place of prayer. Awake and be prophetic. Yes. Deborah was a prophetess. Everybody is not a prophetess, but everybody should be prophetic. That's why the spirit was given. So that you will know the things that are freely given to you. So that you will see. So that you will hear. Because things will come. At times they will come to you as a mother. At times they will come to your children. Yeah, oh yes. 
There was a time I was having a recurring dream. Every two weeks, I will see people chasing my son. And I will appear and I will tell them, did they tell you whose mother he is? And I will wake up. I will have the dream again. And I will tell them, did they tell you whose mother he is? I say, ah, this child. Hey, Gallego, Jesus, my God. Hey, Pastor Egechi, come on. Hey, every two weeks. That means there are hurdles. That means he can't fight that the mother needs to stand at the gate and say he's a firstborn. You can't. You pray from now to three months. You are as blind as even bad sees at night. You don't see in the night. You don't see in the day. Deborah, I'm going to be activating seeing eyes and hearing ears because that's part of my gate, the prophetic. You must see. If you cannot see for anybody, you must see for yourself, for your own life. Nobody called you to come and see for others, but for your own destiny. No, he said you would dream dreams. And you would see visions. You should. Awake and become a judge. That's the third one. She was a judge. The, the Bible said the honor of the saint is to execute the judgment that is what? That is written. Some of you, eh? <laughs> All you need to do is just get up one day and say, I execute this judgment. That's all. That's all. A young lady was disturbing one of my daughters. A spiritual daughter, but very dear to me. She will call me today, mom. She will call me tomorrow, mom. She will call, I say, hey, hey, hey. Let's handle this matter so that I'll have my peace and you have your peace. What is it? I, I, in fact, honestly, I don't know what I prayed. By the time it started, I was crying for mercy. God, please, I beg. No, we didn't expect it to be like this. I was feeling sorry for the person. There are times the, 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 the lioness of you must come out. I wake and execute. He said, this honor has the saint. Praise ye the Lord. There are judgments that are hanging. That it is your responsibility. If you don't execute it, it will be there. Heaven has passed the sentence. But nothing will be done because the executioner decided to do nothing. The court has passed the sentence, but they are waiting for who we enforce, execute the judgment that is written. Some of you need to enter your offices and execute judgment. Some of you need to enter your neighborhood and execute judgment. Awake, utter your song, release your sound. That's what he said, Deborah. Enter your street and begin to do enchantments, begin to release divinations. Speak into the air, speak into the atmosphere. Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I'm the light. As long as I'm in this neighborhood, I'm in charge. It's me that said it. No kidnapper. No this. No that. No that. We had to start doing it for our territory. And when we started doing it, kidnapping rates dropped. We said, no, not on our watches. You can't travel to the university. You can't go to worry because the road was fierce. No, in the day, any time, they will, they will get to you. And I'm a traveler. So I'm not going to wait for Angel Gabriel. I'm the angel of the Lord. And we got up and we began to do something about our territory. And all of a sudden, in fact, I can't even remember the last time I heard that there was an arm robbery on the road. Awake and execute the judgment. Awake and be a mother in Israel. Be a mother. Who is a mother? Jerusalem, how I love to cover. A mother is somebody that covers. Don't think of marriage now. Cover. Some of you must get up in your family and become the cover. Become the cover. Some of you must get up. While I was working in the government, nothing happens to any teacher that I'm not aware of. Yes. I pray. I pray for my school. If anything wants to happen, I will know. I became a cover. It extended to students. I would dream about them. I would have something. I became a cover in this realm of the spirit. Awake and become a mother. Cover your territory. Some of you, the reasons why your brother does not have a job is because of you. You are the Jonah in the boat that we will throw out of that boat today. You are the only Christian in the house. There's no evidence of your Christianity. Only good morning, Jesus, and just stopping them with tongues in the night. Tongues that will not produce result. I will end with a story. I believe I've said it maybe here 
of a guy that was blasting tongues and arm robbers. Have I said that story here before? And it's not Joko, true life. The guy was blasting tongues in the night in our territory. And arm robbers came. As they moved close to the house, they could not approach it. The fire that was coming, they turned back. Another day, they went out. And they heard the same tongue somewhere else. Their first thought was to return. Because they remembered their previous experience. But they saw that as they were moving close, there was no fire. They were moving close. When they entered the house, eh, they beat the guy. You see? Now these tongues, when they speak, then that brother they speak, when he enter. Empty tongues. Bah! Come it down, make it teach you. They speak nonsense. The tongue no get fire. Now these same tongues where you they speak, I'm robber now. It's now telling. <laughs> that your tongues in the realm of the spirit. It, yes, it can be noise. Just chaka chaka. The tongues that you are used to they say prayer yaka chaka chaka. Nothing, nothing. It's not coming from a depth, not coming from a place. You don't have a prayer life, you don't have water, no sacrifice, no incense, nothing. So you're chaka 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 chaka. Your angel self will be giving you space. <laughs> but today you will awake. Yeah. When I say you will awake now, you will jump. I say today you will awake. Yeah. You will arise. Yeah. Do we have oil? Come. Kneel down. Can we pray for her? The Bible said, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointed. Every covenant with death, we command it to be broken. Every covenant with death, every agreement with death, we command it to be broken. Give me everything that has to do with death. Please pray fervently for her. Pray as if it is you I'm praying this prayer for. out of the grave I come out of the grave I come out of the grave now do it like somebody that is coming out I come out of the grave by the blood of the eternal covenant I come out of the grave and I lose off every grave clothes I lose off every grave clothes I lose off every clothes I lose you out Lazarus came out but he was still bound with grave clothes so you come out and then you lose it out I lose off off me off my family, off me, off everyone under the sound of my voice. I lose the grave clothes. No more. 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 In the name of Jesus. Who is that person that been having chest pain? Chest. I will not waste time if you are the person come out you've been having your chest have been heavy you've been having severe chest pain please come out if you are here quickly chest anything that has to do with the chest
Please give me that oil again. Somebody should just hold it and stay here. The Bible said, if anyone is sick, should call for the elders and anoint with oil. Come, 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 come. Please, be, are you part of it? Okay, who are those I'm praying for? Who else? Is there any other person? Hold your hands together. Those of you I'm praying for. Now pray violently in tongues. Auntie, I did not say you should keep quiet. I say pray violently. Hold her. Pray violently. You have one minute. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Everything in your chest that my heavenly father have not planted, whatever it is, we command it to be uprooted in the name of Jesus. We curse that infirmity from the roots. We curse you 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 from the roots. Pray that prayer. I need to hear that breath. We curse you from the roots. We curse it from the root. From the root. We command you to be healed. In the name of Jesus. Look up. Breathe in. Take a deep breath. Breathe out. I saw you doing that and I saw it leaving. Breathe in. Breathe out. Exhale it out. That foul spirit is going now. Breathe in. Take it out. Power. Fire. Upon your chest. You are healed. Absolutely. Perfectly healed. In the name of Jesus. We use them as a point of contact to everyone that is infirmed or sick here. And we declare you are healed. By the power of the Holy Ghost. You are healed in the name of Jesus. All right, God bless. Come. Come. Just bulldoze your way and come. We don't have that time. Are you in a son in the house? What's your name? Raphael. Pastor knows you. Do you? This is your church. Do you tight? Consistently. I need to be sure. Because I was seeing your pocket and I was seeing a hole. I was seeing that the adversary wants to steal funds from you. So I need to be sure that you are in the house and you're tight because it's a principle of tithing that rebukes what? The devourer. So what we are praying for him, we are praying, and in case you are not tithing, repent. I'll just pray. I say no to that operation. I say no. The word of God says, whatever I forbid is forbidden. Whatever I disallow is disallowed. I stand under the authority of the leadership of this house and we disallow the thief. He will not touch your finance. He will not touch your health. He will not touch you. He will not bring anything that will cost money to live. PJT, please come. Maleketa Vadisha Kalika Tabadesa Tabi Garasoto Libadesha Ela Singa Tabarosha Tasekela Manda Bavesa Tali Garabadosa Maleketa Likara Vadesha Tali Garabasoto Liga Bebedosa Mendelikara Vasenta Which department are you in? Okay. Okay. I want to give you an assignment. Will you do it? From this night till next Sunday, that's how many days? You will take Psalm 91 
and pray it every day. Every day. The last day, take a seat. Call your pastor. Let him pray for you. You will live and not die. The thief will not steal money from you. Will not steal your health. And will not steal your life. The church says no. The church says life. And that in abundance. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I did come. My time is up. Pastor Ido, please come. I don't know what is going on in your life, but I'm hearing. We make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, there is I don't know the way that needs to be made now. But I was hearing that song and then I was seeing a path. Look at me. Look at me. I'm describing exactly what I'm saying. As they were singing the song, it's like it was like a bush path. But I saw all of a sudden. You know how grass begins to just give way. And I'm hearing the scripture that you will go forth in joy. The mountains they will break forth into singing, and the trees of the field they will do what they will clap for joy. That is your testimony from now. Whatever way you need a way to be made, it has been made. Receive marvelous help. And what I say to him, I say to all in the mighty name of Jesus, you can go. And so I declare that your eyesight are activated. In the, I would have loved to anoint everybody, but there is no time. So my words are the anointed words that are releasing the power of God over your life. Receive seeing eyes now. All I need is amen. Receive hearing ears now. Let the invisible world of the angelic be opened over you. Let your spiritual portals be opened. From this night, begin to dream dreams. Reasonable spirit dreams that will give you direction in the name of Jesus. Let your visionary lives be open in the mighty name of Jesus. A new level of grace comes upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. I see rain all over the house and I hear there shall be showers of blessings. And so your portion, receive it now by faith. In the name of Jesus, by faith, it comes upon you, it comes upon you, it comes upon you with glasses, and that lady too, I saw you people being highlighted, it is yours, what he says to one, he says to all, and so whatever is highlighted, you take your portion, in the mighty name of Jesus. No more slumber, no more sleep. Shout, I am awake, I am alive. I put on my beautiful garments and I tear off the garment of shame, reproaches, dishonor. Every garment that is not in alignment with the promise of God concerning my life, I tear it off. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am aware. Wow. Thank you, Father. Please lift your hands and thank Him. What a Sunday morning. What an impartation. What a release, what a supply of grace. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Please don't do it religiously. Do it in the spirit. He that giveth thanks in the spirit, do it well. Thank him. Thank him. As you thank him, the seals are coming on the miracles. The seals are coming on the prophecies. The seals... The seals are coming. Seals are coming. Seals. Seals. I'm seeing seals on the heads of men. 
establishing the word of the Lord. It cannot be stolen. It cannot be squandered. It cannot be taken. It cannot be broken. It cannot be diluted. It cannot be polluted. It cannot be attacked hitherto. The seal. The seal of the hand of God is on you. As you give him thanks, the seal is on you. Thank him. Thank you. Thank you. We bless you, our Father. We give you the praise in the name of Jesus. It was last Wednesday I, I told you a couple of things. Um, one of which is that we receive faith comes by the word. The revelation of the word builds faith. But if you build faith, faith and you do not release faith, you will see no miracles. We, faith is built by the word, but faith is released with a shout. So I'm going to ask you, because I saw seals, I'm going to ask you to shout. Because seals are unbroken when angels hold trumpets and shout. Are you still there? So some things that are in your books have been unsealed. Certain things that have been playing out that are against you must be sealed. And all I need you to do is give a shout. Are you ready? Yeah. At the count of three, everybody under the sound of my voice, you will just shout. Whatever is victory, shout for you. If it is hallelujah, shout your own. If it's amen, if it's just letting your lungs go. I want everybody under the sound of my voice. Three, two, one, shout the victory. Somebody. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, we we'll release those dimensions. We are releasing something. It's waiting for you in the future. We are releasing it now. But it's waiting for you in your future. Your atmosphere is changing with your shout. Your clouds are full of rain. They are emptying themselves. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Only as you will reign forever to his kingdom. Only as you will reign to his kingdom. Thank you, Lord, because thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, thine is the glory, world without end. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands together. God has been so merciful to us. Please keep celebrating, keep clapping. You're praising him in advance. Can we, can we honor Prophetess Fanny, please? House of Kings, can you help me? <laughs> wow. Amazing. I, I guess she must have had, herself and Pastor Inkechi, I guess they must have had five to six meetings in the last two, three days in the same city. They've just been going from one, I was so scared, I kept calling to check, are you okay? Are you okay? Five, six meetings in 48 hours. <laughs> Many of you only talk to your friends, so you don't know what that means. The only time you've talked, <laughs> it was with your friends. That's so much. That is a sacrifice. Lives that are giving to the Lord. Please, Pastor, you've heard Pastor Nkichi's testimony. Can we honor her? Wow. My God. God has people who 
carrying powerful dimensions carrying powerful dimensions we thank god and what do we say to the convener of the king lady 3.0 our first lady herself wow yeah many of you don't know but she's 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 judge in my house she's mother in israel here she's everything you know about deborah she personifies please help me this is george when me and daba have issues <laughs> she's the counsel for the defense <laughs> so powerful i thank god we didn't miss this this was a very difficult time to have this conference the nation is on is also unstable there's a lot of things happening but they heard the word of the lord to awake and they have declared the word of the lord i want to let you know that this was not the theme just for a conference these people were creating altars for the nation for the nation you will see nigeria awake yeah. in the days to come yeah. two most powerful visions i've had about nigeria in the last one and a half year you remember first the vision of the dragon slayer the dragon and the dragon slayer and then there was another one i i had here while we were having the Zoom meeting, and it was about the, the nation bound in, in chains and fetters, and people that looked like protocol officers, but I knew they were angels. They came to the cell, they opened the cell, and they asked Nigeria to go free. And when they said she should go free, she was, she was dumb, she was deaf, she was maim. She couldn't move, she couldn't talk. That's where we are right now. Can't you see it? We've been attacked. We've been, but there's silence. Nobody can move. Nobody can talk. Nobody knows what to do. You look back at NSAS, it scares you. You look at the future, you're scared for your children. Because if you look typically at the nation right now, we're just escaping two, two tenors of... Of pain and if God doesn't help us we're going into another two tenors of terror which means a child that was born when Buhari won the first election if things go on like this and God doesn't help us you'll be 23 years old when what they are planning now is scheduled to finish you will be 23 years old may have finished school may have married a wife I may have may have had a child of two months old. You don't know what that means for the future. That's bad. Very bad. Very bad. And when they finished everything, they will now say, uh, "Power should return back to the north. It's time for the north, because they will consider it Yoruba government." So we are planning for another eight years. Twenty-three plus eight. Huh? Whatever. It's it's a it's 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 a shame. But the Lord showed me in that vision, when they asked Nigeria to go free out of the chains and she couldn't move, she couldn't talk, then they touched her mouth. And there was there was a scroll that was given to her. And she began to read the scroll. And she read, read the scroll, it was the national anthem. And her voice was restored. That's the awake we're talking about. Something has tried to stifle, to curse, to spell the power of this nation to arise. But on the strength of this revelation that we have received, Nigeria, awake. So I, I want you to expect that God will do mighty things in our streets in the days to come. And we will see a nation out of the ashes rise again and destroy all the hordes of hell. There's hope for this nation. Things will not go on the way wicked men have planned it. Yeah. Yes. God will intervene. In every prophecy we have believed and we have received for this nation, we will see it come to pass. They will become powerful parables we tell our children. When they are scared whether the word of the Lord will come to pass, we tell them before you were born or while you were small, something happened. In, in the, we will not need an Israeli story. 
it will be too far. We will no longer be quoting the Red Sea story. We would have so tasted the hand of God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I talking to someone? That's what we are sitting on. And we thank God in advance. In the name of Jesus. Now